Hey everybody, this is Chris with Overclockers Club. It's always a challenge for case manufacturers to come up with something that's new and fresh, something that hasn't been beaten to death. Well, today from Fractal Design, we've got the Vector RS, an amazing new case with some cool features. So let's get out of the box and see how well Fractal Design has mixed it up with this new case. I've also got a, a, a riser card here that can relocate your graphics card and we'll look at it too. Probably the hardest thing with any review is making sure you cover all the details uh, without putting people to sleep. So if there's anything I missed or you have any questions, uh, post them in the comments and I'll get to them just as soon as I can. So I'll get the plastic off of here and let's take a look at the case. And just for reference, I dug out my Fractal Design Meshify S2, which is the case here on the left. And I was curious to see how it compared in size and they are about the same width. They're the same length and they're almost the same height. The vector here is just a little bit taller, but not much. So the next thing I'll do here is peel all the protective plastic off the glass. And that's really loud, so I'll be right back. So now I have all of the protective plastic removed from the glass panels. There are three panels, a large one across the top. It's a partial panel, as you can see. And we have another partial panel that's a little smaller uh, across the front. And then, of course, the entire side panel is also glass. Now, it has a very slight smoke to it, but it's not much. It's pretty clear for the most part. And one of my complaints with cases that do the full enclosure across the front, it really looks nice, but a lot of times they don't allow adequate uh, provisions for fresh air intakes. But as you can see here, we have these angled louvers for the fresh air on both sides. So when we do the thermal testing, uh, I'll see how well that lets air in, but I think it looks pretty good. So before I dig too far into the case, uh, I did want to show the accessory box here. And this was stashed right next to the case inside the main box. Usually the accessory box is really small, so I was a little surprised. But when you flip it over, it all makes sense. Here's what's inside. You've got a vented top panel which uh, is an option to replace the glass on top if you want. We have a top filter. There's the accessory box that I was looking for. And then we have the top fan uh, radiator bracket. So let's get this open. And open it up and everything looks to be nicely organized. There's the fan bracket. And there's the filter panel. The alternate vented top panel, maximize your airflow there, and then a small accessory box. And looking inside, it looks like there's a nice little cleaning cloth to keep fingerprints off the glass, which I've already gotten fingerprints all over the glass, so that'll come in handy. And then all of the miscellaneous fasteners, wire ties, connectors. We'll get that open a little later. But the user guide here looks to be quite interesting. And just at a quick glance, it looks to be quite thorough. I like the way they've color-coded things. They've highlighted them in blue so you can get a better feel for what's going on. It's always good to review your manual before you tear into it too much. But of course, in all the excitement of getting a new case, it's easy to forget to go over the manual. So I'll get these side panels off so we can really get a better look at what's going on inside. Dimensionally, it's about 21. Uh, height is about 19 and a half. It kind of peaks up here at the top, so it's about 19 and a half. And then the width of the case, it's a little over nine, uh, probably about nine and an eighth across here. And of course, since the side panel is glass, you do want to be careful. And I'm always a little cautious when I pop these glass panels off. That wasn't too bad. So after you pop it off, you kind of pull it towards you a little bit, and then it comes off. It has a couple little ball and socket 
uh, fasteners there, I guess you can call them, that sort of lock in here. Uh, it gives a nice positive feel. You can tell when it's engaged, you hear a definite click. And then I'll get some more lighting in here so we can really see what's going on a little better. And then the back panel, it also pops off. And it uses the same little ball and socket, I call it, a uh, little latching mechanism there. Now this does have a full uh, sound deadening panel that's affixed to the inside to help keep uh, case noise down, fan noise down. And this thing's pretty heavy. It's got some weight to it. Now one thing I noticed when I compare this to the Meshify S2, of course this is the Vector RS, is the back of the chassis here is identical to the Meshify S2. And the back plane here, the motherboard tray, uh, is also pretty much the same layout from this part all the way to the back two-thirds, really, of the case. It's, it's pretty much the same. We have the same rubber grommets to pass through your wires on the sides and the bottom here. We have the same cutout. And then motherboard coverage is a full-size uh, EATX, which is an extended ATX, an ATX, micro ATX, and the mini ITX. And I also like the way we have the two grommets up here at the top that allow the pass through the uh, power cable for your CPU. And we've got lots of clearance up here. Some cases allow almost no clearance, and if you forget to fish that through there beforehand, good luck getting that connected without pulling the motherboard back out. But we don't have that issue here with this case at all. Now, the big difference I notice uh, here we have a completely different layout completely different approach for uh, supporting hard drives. Very different from the Meshify S2. So that's the big difference I noticed there as far as the chassis is concerned. And the shroud for the power supply runs the full length of the case, but it is heavily vented across the top here, which I think is a really good idea to allow some air circulation. And I know some people like to show off their power supply. That's one of the disadvantages to a shrouded uh, power supply area here. You can't really show off your power supply so well. You can sort of see it through the venting there, but uh, sometimes these shrouds are removable. In this particular case, it is riveted in, so it's not really a piece that you can remove. A quick word about airflow. Of course, with case design, it's all about airflow. This case has a 140 millimeter fan there and a second one there, and we've got an exhaust fan back here. It's also a 140 millimeter fan. Typically, that is plenty to move enough air through the case to keep thermal issues uh, to a minimum. But a big contributor to heat in a case, of course, is your graphics card. Now, this is a blower style graphics card. As you can see here, it has a fan here centrifugal fan which sucks air from inside your case and blows it out the back of the case here and along with moving air it also moves heat and these graphics cards as you probably know can generate a lot of heat so if you have a case that's having issues with airflow then this type of card would probably benefit you because it's helping to push air or move air uh, through the case now the other style of graphics card, you'll have uh, two, sometimes three fans across here, but they just push air down across the heat sink and then blow the hot air right into the case. And if you have enough airflow through the case, that's not really an issue. So uh, with this case, we have these two little riser slots here, I call them. And what that's for is so that you can mount your graphics card vertically and really show it off through the front glass panel. And as fancy as graphics cards are now, you know, normally when you put it in there on your motherboard, well, the thing's facing down, you can't see anything. You can't see the front of your graphics card there, or the top of your graphics card. So, to remedy that, Fractal Design offers this Flex VRC25. This is a special cable that relocates your graphics card. And you can get these on Amazon for about $35. What this does, if you've never seen one, is it plugs in to your PCIe slot on your motherboard. It's got a little plastic cover on it there. 
And then the other end here is actually a PCIe slot. So it's just a remote cable that enables you to mount your graphics card right there if your case has that kind of a provision to mount it vertically. So Fractal has done a really nice job with their hard drive storage and they have these six little trays with up to 11 slots that you can expand into. You can see some of the spares right there. And you can order more of these trays if you do want to fill up all those spots. But each one of these trays is easily removable with a single fastener. You just pop the tray out there and it has room for a solid state drive or a regular three and a half inch drive that fits right in there. And the fasteners are retained so you don't have to worry about them falling out and disappearing. So that takes care of your regular drives. Of course, you can put solid states there, but we also have two dedicated spaces right here for solid state drives, and these also easily come off. And you can order more of these too if you want more. But when we flip it around to the front here, if you want to show off a solid state drive in the front, you can just drop this little bracket right in there and then attach it, and you can mount your solid state drive in front. So we have four dedicated places for solid state drives plus the six trays, expandable up to 11. Now when you talk cable management, we've got a couple of nice Velcro straps already attached right there, and we have various mounting points here to tie off your cables. One there, we've got one hiding back there. And if you have a power supply that has a lot of extra cables, um, your power supply would sit right here in this area. You have all of this space, get my whole hand in there, to store cables and if you still need a little more you can always take these two hard drive trays pop them up a couple levels into this area and you can use that space the three included case fans are the fractal design dynamic x2 gp14 they're all three 140 millimeter fans and they're all three three pin fans and the specifications basically the main things that you would probably want to know are the rpms which is a maximum of 1,000, and then the CFM, each fan is rated at moving just a hair over 68 CFM. Now, there's something interesting about this case. It actually can be changed so that this entire area here, which is the area that covers your hard drive mounting, this can all be opened up. There are two little retained fasteners here, and this little door opens up, has the nice Fractal Design logo there, embossed. Designed in Sweden. Uh, you can see the other side of the hard drive uh, framework there. But this whole framework can be removed. If you really want the maximum uh, open capabilities of the case, you can remove all these trays, and then this section here can be removed. There are a couple screws at the top here, and then there are a couple screws that come up from the bottom and you can remove this, and I'll do that here in just a little bit. But first I want to talk about fan coverage and then radiators. So, first of all, if we look at the case, now let's look at it from the front here. Take a step back. Uh, we have a couple of options here, whether you use 140 millimeter or 120 millimeter fans, and whether or not you keep this area in here. Now, as far as the fans go, it's very similar whether you leave this in here or not. But our coverage for 140 millimeter fans are, of course, we have the stock fan in the back here. We can put up to two 140 millimeter fans up top. We can put three across the front. There are already two included. So you can put a third one down here at the bottom. Uh, you can put 120 millimeter fans in the same positions. One here, uh, three across the top if you go with 120 millimeter fans three across the front, and then the bottom you can go with two 120 millimeter fans or two 140. You can see a little better here. There are actually mounting provisions down here in the bottom. So if you want to pull some air up from the bottom and flood the bottom of the case with fresh air, you can do that. So whether you have the open layout, which is removing all of this here or not, really the fan um, considerations are about the same, uh, whether you go with 120 or 140. The only other real exception being uh, at the top, you can go with three 140 millimeter fans if you remove this section here. That gives you room for an extra fan uh, on that end. So you can really fill this case with fans.
As far as radiator support goes, it's going to be a lot easier for me to point it out on the graphics than it is to point things out inside the case because that will just get really confusing. So really you got two different layouts. You got the storage layout where we have the hard drive cages and that whole assembly here takes up that space. And then the open layout, all this is opened up and removed. And what that does is that really frees up uh, the case to go with a longer radiator. So you can go with up to a 420 millimeter uh, radiator on the top, whereas up here you're limited to a 360. Uh, the front of the case, uh, really the coverage is the same up to 360 up front. The bottom of the case uh, is pretty much the same, 240, 120, or a 280, 140 in the bottom. And uh, really the top is where it gets opened up when we uh, get the hard drive storage area cleared out. So as I'm taking the panel out here from the hard drive uh, cage, I realize that this panel actually is not supposed to be completely removed. Rather, it gets transferred from the front of the case to the back of the case, and it will end up living in the same plane as the motherboard tray. So it'll just be one continuous panel across the back. And when that panel gets moved back here, you have room for two hard drives that will attach uh, to the back of that. Now there's six screws total that hold this in, two at the top, two that come in from the bottom, and then after you pull the front panel off, uh, there's one right here and one down there. So six screws, and then you can transfer this panel to the back. Of course you want to take out the fans to really show the full open layout. Across the top here we've got four little metal contact pads, and what those are for when we look at the front cover, this is the inside of the front cover. There are actually four little spring-loaded pins right there that make contact for the RGB system there, so you get electrical continuity. And then the louvers here, where the fans draw the air into the case, there are actually two little filter panels uh, that you can easily remove. They just a couple little tabs there you push, and these panels pop out because they will get clogged with dust over time. But that front panel pops off, you just kind of grab it from the bottom and pull out. And then we'll get the top panel off. And to get the top off, there are two screws that you have to remove. One there, one there. And once you take those out, just pull that top towards you a little bit. That releases it and then it comes out. And you can see we've got the little tabs that fit into the slots along the top there. And while the front panel is off, I should show that you have access to the front filter panel. So you can slide that out, blow off the dust, and pop it back in. And then of course you'll put the front panel back on. And as much as I like the glass top panel, Fractal Design does give you the option, if you want more airflow, they give you this nice fan mounting bracket that fits in top right there fits in the top of the case like that and you screw that down and then it has a filter panel that pops in there like that you get all these tabs lined up once those are in there then you can push this forward and that locks in and then ultimately this is the replacement. You can see that's very well ventilated. That's the replacement panel for the glass. And that sits just like the glass did. You gotta line up the little notches and tabs, which is a lot easier to do when you have two hands. But once I get it in there, there we go and it just pushes into position just like the glass panel and then you can put the top on there. But that's in case you decide you want to add some fans to the top, which of course comes in handy if you're going to put a radiator in there. So now I'll get this moved, get the fans out of the way and we can show the full open layout. So I took those other two screws out and took the panel out here, but that's what it looks like when that panel is completely removed but I'm going to put it back in in the back, but first I have to take these fans out. So this is the bottom side of the case. I've got that 
panel now relocated to the back side, which means I had to take the two screws out that were here and transfer them over to here, which is a good time to show you the feet. These sit about seven eighths of an inch clearance underneath the case, and they're nice rubber uh, pads at each corner so you don't scratch your floor up. And those are the ones at the front of the case. These are the feet at the back of the case. And there's the panel that has been relocated and I put all six screws back in. Two here, uh, two on the front, and then the two that come in from the top. And those go in through these two holes right here. Now when you take the top I.O. panel cover off, there's actually a small plug that goes in there. Be very careful when you remove it. Usually I take a small screwdriver and you have to pry these little corners up just a little bit to get the little tabs to release, but you want to be very careful with those. And then there's one here that unplugs, so I'll see how easy that is to get uh, these two pieces. Actually, that's the end there, plugged back in to the uh, back side of that I.O. panel cover. All right, I got both those little plugs back in the underside here. Connected, that wasn't too bad. Got this one reconnected, and there you can see what that panel looks like when it's now relocated to the back, and that frees up, frees up all this space here uh, in the front. And of course, along the front, you can put three 140 millimeter or three 120 millimeter fans, if you like. And built into the case is a really nice fan controller. On the left, we have connections for three pin fans. So we have six of those. So your case fans, three pin case fans could all be connected here. And then on this side, we have three four pin connectors. And the instructions show that the top two here are for PWM fans, which you can use for anything, and then the bottom one here it shows for a uh, CPU fan. And getting power to it, we have a regular SATA connector there that delivers power to this fan hub, and then we've got a four pin connector. This would go to your motherboard and connect to the CPU fan header uh, on the motherboard, and the control from the motherboard will be transferred to this board here through this connection. So that's why that one's important there. And then the instructions go on to say that you have short circuit protection and advanced power regulation shields, components from potential voltage and current spikes without risk of power loss to connected coolers. So that's really nice. So we'll get some fans connected to that. I touched on it a few minutes ago, but when you move the back panel here to the back of the case, Um, you can actually locate, I've got a three and a half inch drive here, so one could go at the bottom and then you flip it over and one can go here at the top. You've got these key slots here that allow for mounting of your hard drive. So that's a pretty clever use of space because there's just enough depth here to uh, put an extra couple of hard drives back there if you like. The way the light is reflecting off the top here, the glare, it's a little hard to read the printing, so we'll start here on the I.O. panel with the power button. We've got two USB 3.0 ports. We have a USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-C right here. Then we have a microphone, headphone, and reset button right there. So now that I've got the top of the case open, that's going to make the build a lot easier. And I always like the extra access that a case with an open top allows you to have. So we'll get this system built up and then we can start doing some thermal testing. So I'm slowly getting the motherboard installed. The cooler is a Noctua D14, which is my standard workhorse for my thermal testing. Now the graphics card you see there is in the standard orientation that almost every case out there puts it in, which is fine. But if you've got a really fancy graphics card, it's sort of hard to see what's going on there on that side. Well, we have a solution for that here in just a moment. But first, I'm going to install the power supply also. And Fractal has a really nice bracket here that mounts to the back of the case. And you can remove that bracket and the little fasteners there are retained. 
and this bracket gets attached to the back of the power supply. So I'll get that mounted and we'll get the power supply in. And the purpose of that bracket becomes evident when you see that it, it makes it so much easier to install the power supply from outside of the case, whereas normally you have to install it uh, from the back here and push it in. So this just makes it a little easier to get the power supply uh, installed. And with these retained little thumb screws here, that makes it a lot easier. So, and it makes it easier to pull the power supply out if you ever need to swap it or troubleshoot it. So now I removed the graphics card and we're going to go ahead and install this Flex VRC25 Vertical PCI Express 3.0 riser kit. Now the Vector RS as well as the Meshify S2 both have the provisions here for mounting a graphics card vertically. So you loosen this screw which allows this little plate, retention plate to pop up and down and you take the other two screws out which take the little block off plates out of there and I restored the ones that I took out here earlier so I went ahead and closed that back off and this little relocation kit if you check Amazon the prices fluctuate I've seen it for 35 I've seen it for 45 so it kind of depends on when you search but you really want to watch the instructions and pay attention because on the bottom here as you can see you have all the exposed solder connections on the bottom of the plate. Now there's a little plastic offset there to space it up, but you want to be careful that you don't just mount it in there right away because even though you've got the mounting holes that are tapped, there are actually some spacers that come with this little cable and you have to put these spacers, these little offsets in there first. So there I have both the little risers installed, little offsets. And the slots here for the screws are there to give you a little bit of uh, flexibility there so you got a little bit of adjustment. And then, and then you pop that little plastic protector off, exposing your end of the cable there that will plug into your PCIe slot up there at the top. Then you're ready to install your graphics card. A couple things to remember though, there's a little locking tab, you need to slide it out of the way and then once you get the graphics card seated, you push it to the left there and that locks the graphics card into position. And of course down here you can see the little standoffs. You see how important those are to set the uh, base of the socket at the right height. Very important that you put those spacers in there first, those little offsets that are included with the cable. Now the other thing that's important at the front, there are a couple little tabs at the bottom of the graphics card pop into. You can see them a little more clearly at the front, actually the back of the case, right here where the little tabs lock into position. And then at the top, of course uh, put your retaining screws in and then you can slide this plate down so your screws will go in there and then you slide this retaining plate down and then lock it into position after that you are ready to show off your graphics card vertically one thing I haven't really talked too much about is the fact that this is an RGB case so here's a little controller that comes in the hardware kit. It uses a SATA connector for power and then the other end there as you can see attaches right there to that connector. And in the back of the controller there are little magnets embedded so wherever you want to stick it it will stay up. And then you notice there's a little arrow there that is very important on any RGB stuff no matter who the motherboard or case manufacturer is but you always line up the arrows just like that you line up the arrows and push them together 
Now the system is all powered up. You can see some of the RGB colors there. And without the front panel on, you can't see the front colors, but I'll get that on here in a moment. I put the two 140 millimeter fans in. I slid them down just a little bit. With these slots, you can sort of adjust the position to try and get the airflow to go more in line with the CPU cooler. I'm going to put the glass top back in rather than the vented panel. The reason for that is to look at the best case so that all of the fresh air that's being pushed into the case from the two front fans uh, goes to the rear of the case. If I put the vented top panel in, there's a chance that some of the air that's coming in could go out the top. And if I were adding fans to the top, then I would want the vented panel in. But for my testing, I'll use the glass top. Now the glass top panel is on and the front panel is on, so you can see the continuation of the RGB along the top, then it sort of jogs to the left, and then straight down the front. And I like the way it's sort of minimalistic, but it really gets the job done. It's not overwhelming. You can see the RGB, and that's just the right amount, I believe, for this style of case. I really like the full side glass panel. It really shows off the internals of the case. You can really see your motherboard, your cooler. The vertical graphics card is really a nice option there. And there's plenty of room between the fan and the side glass there to get air in so you're not starving the card at all and you can show it off. And something else I just noticed actually there's some vents up here along the back that allow any heat that's trapped at the top to come out. Right there. I didn't notice that earlier. So there's really quite a bit of room back here. Now I didn't go to uh, much effort to make it pretty just yet but this area here in front of the power supply uh, there's a lot of room so I'm using a fully modular power supply so I only use the cables that I need so there's really not much there that I have to hide but even if you didn't use a modular power supply there's plenty of room to stash your cables in there and this is fairly deep uh, between the back plane and your cover you get a lot of room there for cable management and if you want to install your three and a half inch drives on the back plane, just take these little rubber grommets and these little shoulder screws. Put the little grommet over the shoulder screw, and I've already got three of them on there. We'll put the fourth one there. And then you'll take your drive, and it fits right there in those key slots. So you just pop it in there push down and the rubber isolators keep vibration down and of course you can put one drive there and there's room for one more at the top. So I turn the lights down so you can really see the RGB effect and then I'll cycle through some of the effects here with a little controller. So you can control uh, like the first one here is a chasing effect and then you can alter the colors you want to go with a solid color and you can change the speed and the intensity you can go to a full lighting effect and then go through the different colors or you can just go with solid if you want to go with that Pick a color you like. Okay, the way the system is set up, we're running a Z87 motherboard with a 4770K CPU. Right now, there's no overclock. We're running at idle. Uh, we're running at about 29, 30 degrees, 31 degrees C, right around in there. Uh, I'm looking at fan RPMs to see, and for whatever reason, uh, the connection, I'm not getting any feedback for RPMs. I don't know if that's my software there or what the situation is. I can control the fan speed through the software but I just can't see the RPMs right now. Um, the other thing I noticed even at idle I can feel air being pulled in here through the side vents here through the intake. So the first thing we'll do is uh, look at the thermal imaging 
of the case when it's at idle. There really shouldn't be anything too exciting there. And then we'll put a load on the system with no overclock, look at the thermals, and then we'll overclock it, and then look at the thermals again. So the system's at idle. We'll get some numbers here as we look around the case. Of course, nothing terribly exciting because there's really not any heat being generated. And some of what you're seeing there, uh, especially when I stand in front of the glass, is the heat signature reflecting off of the glass. So you can't really see exactly what's going on inside. So really, what you're looking at is the exhaust temperature. So at idle, we're around 29, 30 C. There's the graphics card over there. And at idle, I don't expect to really see too much. So we'll go ahead and put a load on it and take a look and see what the numbers look like there. So with a load on the system, we're running around 65 degrees Celsius on the 4770K. And looking at the temps at the back here, our clock speed's around 3.7 gigahertz. Again, not overclocked. So our temperature went up a little bit from what we saw earlier on the exhaust side. And graphics card, not much going on there. So now we'll put an overclock to it and see what the temperatures look like. So now the overclock is cranked up to 4.2 gigahertz on the 4770K using a Noctua D14. Of course, the exterior of the case is going to remain cool. You can see the intake there on the sides where we're pulling our air in. And the fans are dead silent. So you get to the back and you hear a little bit of fan noise, but not much. And they're running full speed. And our temps back here don't look a whole lot different than what I saw earlier on just loading the system with no overclock, but we're a little warmer. There's a little more warmth there. And our CPU temperature is right around 76. Let's see if we can see anything on the side here. And yeah, right where the CPU cooler is, we can see it's just a little bit warmer than the rest of the case. Which is no surprise. Well, I got to thinking. I still have the Meshify S2, and it uses the exact same fans here as the Vector RS. So why not put the bracket in the top? I took these three fans out of the Meshify S2. Let's put them in here and see how much air we can move. So there are the three 140 millimeter fans that I sort of transplanted from the Meshify S2 since they are the same fans that are used here in the Vector RS. And you can see there's room up there for a radiator. And if you're using a liquid cooled system, uh, this cooler wouldn't be in there. So you'll have a little more room that would be cleared out. Now I tried to put some fans on top and the system is not really made to put the fans on top. The fans are really meant to be installed like that. And of course, you can add another 140 millimeter fan right there at the bottom because there's room for one more. So you can really max out your uh, fans here in this case. And the other thing you may have noticed is I went ahead and put this little cover, this door back in there. You can leave it out if you want or you can put it back in there, but that's the door that's actually attached to that panel when the panel is up here at the front and all the hard drive trays are populated in that area. But that just sort of cleans it up a little, gives it a cleaner look. And then after you get the top vented panel attached, you just put the front on there. Make sure it is all attached. There we go. And then we're ready for the side panel. So how quiet is it with the extra fans running. Well, I've got them cranked up to full speed. And can you hear them? Yes. Are they really loud? Not at all. It's really pretty subdued. But of course, that's one of those things you have to hear in person. 
but this is not what I would call loud by any stretch of the imagination. So now we'll look at the three 140 millimeter fans through the big vented section there and we can actually see the center of each fan. You can see the fan motor shows up as a little hot spot there. Of course this is the coolest end of the case because this is where fresh air is being pulled in from the front and pushed right out the top of the first fan here. And we should get a little warmer as we move back toward the heat sink. So that's where you're going to see the air, even though there's no load on the system. So now we'll go ahead and uh, put a load on it and see how much the temperatures change. I doubt we're going to see any difference here at the front at least. So now we'll look at the temperatures here. The overclock is at 4.2 gigahertz, and we have the Prime 95 load on the system. And our temperatures are a little bit warmer than what we had before, a few degrees there, which is to be expected. But we still see the same gradual temperature change. We're still around 28, 29 at the front. And as we get to the back, that's where the heat sink is, which is where we're going to see the, most of the heat concentrated back here. So our CPU temperature again is around 76 C. So that kind of tells me even without these three fans, we had a pretty decent amount of airflow through the case uh, when we have the glass panel on top. So another quick look at the full system build with the side panel here off so you can really see it inside without all the glare, but you can see the RGB is running. Would have been sort of nice if they could have added some RGB effects to the inside of the case, but that's stuff you can always add later. There's just a ton of room up there if you want to add the fans with that fan mounting bracket and this panel uh, optional for the top. The graphics card that can be mounted vertically to show it off. The vented power supply shroud there with room for two solid state drives on top. We've got two solid state drives available to run behind the motherboard tray with two three and a half inch drives that can go behind this in this current configuration and remember if you pull this panel out to the front you have all of this space here for hard drives but the fan support and liquid cooling support especially at the front and at the bottom and again you can run that huge radiator across the top it's amazing what they packed into this case so the thermal testing showed me that even in the stock configuration with the two 140 millimeter fans in the front and the single 140 millimeter in the rear, you can move a decent amount of air through here uh, for a mild overclock. The fan options for this case, of course, are amazing along with your liquid cooling support. So you really have uh, a lot of ways you can build your system. Uh, the hard drive support in here also, it's amazing they can fit that much into a case this size. You got the glass panels, you have the optional uh, mesh top if you really want to maximize your airflow and put your fans across the top. Uh, you can put fans on the bottom also. $179 is the retail price on this. I think that's really reasonable for the feature set that you're getting here. Especially when you look at the additional uh, cable that you can add there to put your uh, video card uh, installed in there vertically. I think that's great for another $30, $40 for that cable. I think that's a good investment. You got your USB Type-C along the top. You got your RGB. Uh, you've got vented sections with all your filter panels on the bottom and in the front here to keep the dust out. Again, I really think uh, Fractal Design has hit the ball out of the park here with the Vector RS. So this is Chris with Overclockers Club. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.